By the Emperor, it's been a while since Poncha's uploaded. It wouldn't surprise me if his channel is dead. I agree. This DLC came out in December and he's only now making a video. Talk about being lazy. It seems Grand Master Kai has finally got off his ass and sent reinforcements from Titan. Vakir, you sold your soul to Chaos just so we could use you as a satnav. Shut up. I would have liked a Psy Titan, a Land Raider or even a Storm Raven, but we will make do. Unleash the Big Daddy Dreadnought! <laughs> I was meant to get this video out earlier, but life, work, forced me to have a break. I feel like the return of a Primarch bringing new life. Sorry it's taken me so long. Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, Duty Eternal. I won't lie, but I called this DLC. In my first video, I said that a Dreadnought would make a great addition to the game because the mechanics were already in place for one. But this DLC has many negative reviews on Steam, and after playing my fair share, I now understand why this is. This is what we're going to be talking about in the video because I want to give some feedback to the developers and also this is my first DLC review. There's a few others I would like to cover at a later date like the battle sector races so I hope I can do that in due course. Actually I don't know why I'm doing DLC videos, there's plenty of other videos that I need to get done but uh, fuck it honestly. I also want to thank everybody that gave me feedback on the Dark Tide video. I want to improve my channel and criticism is the only way to do that. I am going to continue to show my face in videos but I'm not going to, you know, push it right into the square and make me take up the whole screen again. I, I've definitely learnt my lesson from that. I've also, you know, had a bit of a haircut as well and, you know, shaved as well so it's a little bit less of a, a neck beard this time but, uh, you know, I'm sure it will grow as I'm doing this video. For those of you who don't know what Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is, it's basically Mechanicus with Grey Knights, turn-based combat against the Death Guard and Demons, ship management that can affect missions and gameplay, you're stopping a disease called the Bloom spreading to other systems, and the game can be quite unforgivable at times. I do now have a new appreciation for the game, now I know how to play and the mechanics, it's far more enjoyable than the first time round. Whilst the DLC sounds like the perfect thing for the game to expand further on, I was worried about this, because the game's balance does hang by a thread, from the combat, ship travel time to Morbus Gates which can end the game if not done, ship management currency with servitors, and getting enough seeds to fight the bosses and progressing the campaign. Throwing any new type of content that could upset that balance could be disastrous for the game. Anyway, the DLC. What's actually in it? Well, to keep it simple, you get a Dreadnought, a Tech Marine, three new mission types, I guess, a new currency, and a kind of side story, but not really. The Dreadnought. It's beautifully well made and fits into the combat extremely well. The level design allows for it to move through up and down most terrain. It can smash through walls, which I love to see, which gives access to new pathways for your Grey Knights, which you couldn't do before. It has a limited arsenal, but still some nice choices. You've got the plasma cannon, which is great against multiple armoured targets, and you can overcharge it as well, just like the tabletop. In game, if you do this, it doesn't allow you to fire it for a few turns. No explosion. The multi melter is designed for single target extermination. The missile launcher, whilst awesome to watch, doesn't really do any damage and acts as more as a crowd control device in combat, reducing movement, which does come handy in some missions. I don't know how the logic of firing inside a cruiser works, I'm pretty sure the Mechanicus are going to be quite pissed off about that. The gothic artwork on the wall doesn't matter. The Psy Cannon is glorious to see in play, particularly good at dealing with Psykers, and then you have a few choices on melee weapons from the Nemesis Doom Fist, which is great for stunning enemies, and the Nemesis Doom Glaive, great if you want to be an anime character. Let's be honest, Warhammer is just a western anime at this point when you have moves like this. But the GOAT, the S tier weapon beyond all others that makes the Dreadnought a beast in combat is the Smoke Launcher. You may look at the Smoke Launcher on tabletop and think, I'm never going to use that, but in Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, this little party popper has saved my ass too many times. It just negates a huge amount of range damage, and if you're in a tricky spot, it's worth using. You can also charge with the Dreadnought, which is pretty much useless unless you're pushing enemies off the map. That's pretty much all the weapons. I would have loved an auto cannon, and I really miss the assault cannon from Dawn of War 2, but I guess making them all different to each other is not easy. I wish we could have had a Fenrisian Great Axe. On the tabletop, they can slice a monolith in half if you roll good. <coughs> That's why Space Wolves are best. Actually, we need a fitting name for the Dreadnought. This might be heresy for Grey Knights, but 
Oh well. The Dreadnought gains willpower on every turn due to being a character, which I like as you need it to utilise abilities. It does have a skill tree as well, this can buff certain weapons or make it more of a support dreadnought with smoke grenades and being cover for allies. Every turn, if you get a kill, you regain health. This is crucial as I'm not a big fan of how you repair the dreadnought as it doesn't regain health out of combat like knights. I'll talk about this later. In combat, the dreadnought looks intimidating but one wrong move and it's the angels of death scene for you. Not enough left of me to save a second time. The Dreadnought is a tool in your arsenal, not a win button. Of course, you can mitigate death with the new Grey Knight class, the Tech Marine, which is very situational. The Tech Marine himself is rather shit. Whilst his bolt rifle has good range, it does less damage than a nerf gun. It's nerf for nothing! His abilities do come in handy, like healing the Dreadnought, giving more armor or damage to machine type allies. The Tech Marine can become viable with its servitors. Understanding how and when to use them has been a pain. They can wander off, not come when called, which sometimes begs the question, why not just take another class? You can choose from a few different servitors. They essentially put Grey Knight abilities onto the servitors. For example, the Heavy Bolter one can overwatch, the Multi Melter fire supports, the Plasma Gun is good against armored targets. The servitors heavily rely on the positioning of enemies to be effective. You can take more than one depending on your armor, which is very useful. Firstly, because they can be expendable in combat with no repercussions, but they also work very well together. One combo I found extremely viable was taking the Hydraulic Claw Servitor that makes enemies rampage and attack that individual and the Bolter Servitor to overwatch. The Tech Marine's skill tree consists of making a more defensive playstyle with the Servitors allowing for more healing and armor buffs or offensive with more damage and movement. You can make the Tech Marine a tad more viable himself with more armor break on his axe and adding a flamer. I do like this little animation the Tech Marine has holding his axe. If you get multiple Tech Marines, you can start your own little army, which are more expendable than Skaven Slaves. There are three mission types of content in the DLC. One is based around a small story, the other is being able to use Lunette Dominus in combat, and the last is being able to use the Dreadnought in basic seed missions. The story missions start with you receiving a distress call about a strike force that's pinned down. Commander, another strike force has been pinned down in the Dironan system. If it was up to me, I would say fuck em. We got other priorities, but they have a Dreadnought. I say we take a page out of the Blood Angels book and snatch that beauty. What do you say, mate? Once you locate them, you find that all that's left is the Dreadnought, and you fight with him until he goes off and does his own thing. You then relocate him in trouble, which you save, and he joins your crew. During this time, you get word from Lunette Dominus about a new virus strain called the Technophage, which focuses on mechanical-type enemies. This also incorporates new Death Guard stratagems that can reduce ammo, range damage, and a few other things. Once the Dreadnought's on your team, you have new mission types with the Technophage virus popping up, which allow you to bring the Dreadnought. They have harder enemies, but only in those missions. There are then missions with Lunette Dominus that appear, which is where she has to disarm corrupted atmospheric pacifiers. She has some unique abilities and weapons like ignoring armor, one that disables all ranged weapons, and another that also disables an enemy. After completing those with Lunette Dominus, it offers you the last mission in the DLC, which is disinfecting the Pious Absolution, which is a frigate, and it becomes basically an episode of Call the Cleaners in the UK. As the UK's population tops 65 million, the social care system is more stretched than ever, with people often falling through the cracks, unable to keep a habitable home. For them, specialist cleaners are a lifeline. What is that? <laughs> no, really, what is that? Spit, I think. What? The mountain of spit, right. spit like dries up. It doesn't. Okay, Jasmine. It's dry because it's solidified. It's gone solid. Oh my emperor! It smells like Papa Nurgle's shitter in here. Do we really want to take control of this ship? Burn it with holy fire. Once you purge the ship of all infection, you gain the frigate as the last form of content in the DLC. And this is pretty useful, as you can send your Grey Knights off in it to complete missions, allowing you to be elsewhere. The one problem with this though, is it's very random with success rates, and it's not very reliable. I really do like this last piece of content, as it's unique, it works well in the game, and provides a good incentive to complete these missions. Once you complete the DLC, you unlock more armor sets for the Dreadnought and Tech Marine, which I was worried about there not being. The DLC did also release with some free content, which is new enemies. Have you ever wondered how a great unclean one shaves his backside? Well, he uses a flesh mower. They basically charge towards you with their razors, doing a huge amount of damage and knockback, and you can't dodge unless you interrupt them with stun. Plez nerf. They're modelled beautifully though. You then have the Plague Marine with the Melter Gun, and oh my god, these guys are such a pain. 
obviously counters for the Dreadnought, I understand that, but don't make the mistake I made by trying to tie them up in close combat because these guys have an ability called Lethal Proximity and well, Melter Gun at point blank range equals bleh. My main problem with these guys is their crack grenades, since every Melter Marine has one, they can become kind of spammable which isn't fun to play against, but that's just my opinion. The next enemy is the Noxious Blightbringer, who has a little bell which he loves to play. <laughs> This guy is pretty powerful with a large amount of armour, he denies psychic abilities and any form of healing for the Grey Knight. He can buff enemies as well with more stuns, so Blight Lord Terminators become really hard to kill. There is one more enemy in a recent patch, the Lord of Virulence, but I haven't managed to find him yet. That's pretty much all the content. So what are you waiting for? Don't you want to support Chaos Gate Demon Hunters? Give me more money now! I think it's only fair we look at the other side of the DLC and see what could be improved on. As if I care about issues or problems, Vakir. You've probably been corrupted by Zinch at this point and now you're trying to sabotage this. A man gotta eat and put food on the table, think of the devs. To my delight whilst editing this, Complex Games have listened to feedback and addressed a number of my original issues with the DLC, starting with the balance of harder enemies showing up in nearly every mission even without the Dreadnought, screwing games if you load existing campaigns with the new DLC. They buff the tech marine with more damage and health for the servitors, they improve the gamble on the frigate to be more reliable, and a number of bug fixes which I did experience. I've also noticed they've added more tutorials in the game. Did you guys add this one to ship battles because of me? If so, thank you. Can anyone tell me if this cinematic was here as well when the game launched, as I must have been an idiot to miss this because it's a great introduction to the universe. So other than the DLC launching in a poor state and being fixed, what's the problem with it? Well, I think it comes down to a few things. In my opinion, these are access, playing, content. To start with, in order to access the Duty Eternal DLC, you will be prompted when starting a new campaign to select the expansion. After that, there's no explanation about how to achieve the Dreadnought. For many players who have paid £12, you would be upset spending several hours finding this out, because Chaos Gate Demon Hunters is a long game. Once you get past that initial hassle, you'll have the Dreadnought and you can play with him. But this brings me on to the second problem of accessing the DLC, dedicated missions. I was really looking forward to fighting Morty with the Dreadnought, however you can't. Essentially, Technophase missions and the small story is the only areas you can bring the Dreadnought in. You can't bring them in Reaper battles or dedicated campaign missions. You have to look at the Dreadnought as if it's mission specific, and this does upset me as I think playing against bosses and the endgame stuff would have been really fun. I understand that balance might have been an issue, but I think adding more enemies in any type of mission to compensate would have been a good idea. This does hurt the DLC, as for myself and many others, we expected to be able to use the Dreadnought in the campaign anywhere. This brings me on to the third problem of the DLC, playing. Because if you had dedicated missions that you use the Dreadnought in, it messes up the game's timing. In Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, if you don't keep seed missions down, research the Reapers, and you ignore Noctilith Crowns, you're going to lose the game. All that takes time. It takes time to travel, time to research, and time to reach the end game content. If you focus on playing the new Technophage and Lunette Dominus missions, it starts to handicap you badly for the actual story. And that's the problem with this DLC. To enjoy it, you have to neglect the actual main campaign which you get punished for. This DLC should be working in contrast with the campaign so that the missions you complete with the Technophage progress the story as well. And this could be easily done. Add the Technophage missions to the Noctilith Crowns and then at least you're keeping the gates down whilst enjoying the Dreadnought DLC content. But this leads on to the fourth issue of playing the DLC, healing the Dreadnought. You heal the Dreadnought in game with Servitors, and Servitors are extremely important in Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. They're how you update and repair the ship, and you can lose a lot of campaign progress if you don't invest right. It's how a lot of people lose the campaign. The problem with repairing the Dreadnought with Servitors, it means you're not putting Servitors into the ship, and this starts to upset the game's currency, because if you do this multiple times, the game assumes by the 4 to 500 day mark that you have a decent ship, and will throw warp storms or enemy ships at you, and if you're playing to keep the Dreadnought alive, you're going to have a really tricky time. Healing the Dreadnought should not be with Servitors, period. Perhaps make it the new Technophage currency, since that's what the point of it was to avoid this situation of messing up the economy. And lastly, the content. I love the Dreadnought, the Tech Priest, as well as the small story, but it's missing the final touches of content in my opinion. How about Dreadnought Technophage stratagems? 
cutscenes for the small story with our characters talking about the Dreadnought, DLC specific music, complex games could have done their own twist on the Mechanicus type theme. Overdrive and actuators. Something that is disappointing is there's no executions or cinematic shots for the Dreadnought. I personally love seeing that stuff. New maps dedicated to the DLC or that are added for free. It's little things like that that could have made a difference. With all that being said, let's give a final verdict on this DLC. It seems like the neckbeard isn't too bad yet, but it's definitely getting there. I know a few people might not understand my review bingo, but I'm trying to move away from using numbers in reviews. The reason for this is that statistics prove that most people who do reviews for games give a 7 out of 10 to just remain fair and play it safe. I want to be harsh when it's required, and doing this allows me to give an honest opinion but also advise you what I think you should do. I don't recommend you buy the DLC right now. Play the original Chaos Gate Demon Hunters campaign and see if it's your type of game first. Fortunately, this content isn't something the base game requires to have fun or make it work, so don't feel pressured. It's definitely not in a state where I would advise you never to touch it as it's completely playable. The price is rather fair at £12 and you're getting a few good hours of content on top of a long campaign. If I was putting this video out a few months ago, I would say definitely wait for a patch, but things are more balanced and fixed at this current state. I believe £12 is fair for a DLC for this type of game. However, it is lacking some content as I mentioned before. I think a few more things here and there could have gone a long way, but I do acknowledge the free content as well. If you like Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, Warhammer 40k and OG Dreadnoughts that we're never going to see again, 100% Warhammer veterans you will love this DLC. I don't even have Warhammer Bambis on here because I don't think anyone new to Warhammer should play this due to the difficulty and lore. This DLC does come across in the end as support the devs work. It may not be the best content, but if you like Chaos Gate and want to see more, this is how to do it. So what now? That's the end of the video and Chaos Gate Demon Hunters? Maybe we can look towards the future of the game. I want to say to the devs, it's okay to leave the game as it is. You've made a great product, don't feel the pressure of needing to add to it. You could go the same route as the Mechanicus devs, have one DLC and leave. But if you are going to continue, it either needs to be completely separate from the main campaign, like an expansion, or it's part of the base campaign adding more to it. If it's an expansion, they can go in any direction, I've said this before. A sequel to the story about the Kyr, which could be a second game, zinch enemies that you embark on a new crusade on, but obviously that's a lot more work. If we are trying to keep it in the story and mechanics, they could add more Death Guard and Nurkle enemies, but they have exhausted both factions rather well with content, and I feel like that should be free content anyway. Adding more Reapers or a new enemy faction won't work as it doesn't fit in the story narrative. Once again, I do feel like they've already exhausted the Grey Knight roster, so I don't feel like they can add much more there. You could make the argument for the Dread Knight or Land Raider, but I do feel we need to keep this within the power scales. I think adding more enemies over time for free would be a good start. This could be a Plague Marine Icon Bearer, Plague Drones of Nurgle and a Sloppity Bile Piper. But it's a shame there isn't a way to utilise the corn assets at the start of the game, as the Bloodthirster and Blood Letters would just be a shame to waste. I really can't put my finger on where they should go from here without it requiring a significant investment of resources. I would love to know if anyone has any ideas in the comments sections, so please do let me know. Special thanks to the Patreons again for their support. I want to be transparent with everybody on the channel and say I have been working behind the scenes on several videos, being the Unification mod, Warhammer 40k Battlefront, Warhammer VR, the early stages of the Bolt Gun review, Warhammer going mainstream. All of these videos will have their time, but I need to do some more research before fully investing into them. As for my next video, it's either going to be a Bolt Gun review, or maybe a shorter deep dive video on the Space Marine Augmented mod before Space Marine 2 comes out. I might ask a few people in my Discord to play that with me, so stay tuned. Thank you very much, take care, and I wish you all the best.